It is one of the most famous underdog stories ever told. An attacking force armed with technologically superior weapons is led by a giant warrior feared by all. He is brought down by just a stone hurled by a boy named David. With a sling and a stone, David smote the Philistine giant. David not only defeated Goliath, but defeated the Philistines, and by defeating the Philistines was actually the uh, motivating force for the beginning of the history of Israel. How difficult would it have been for a boy to strike and kill a giant with just one accurate blow? The sling is the great ignored and underrated weapon of the ancient world. It's very cheap, it's the weapon of poor people, but it was incredibly effective. As two great armies stood facing each other on the edge of battle, why was a boy matched up against a giant? It was the 11th century BC, and the people of Israel were confronted by their enemies, the Philistines. The Philistines came from the area of the Aegean Islands, equipped with the most modern technological weapons against a very small, a minor nation. The Philistines' champion, Goliath, was covered in an armor of bronze. He had a tremendous amount of armor, which when we uh, actually weigh by the, uh, that which is mentioned in the Bible, will come close to 125 pounds. So you see this unbelievably large, monstrous creature. When Goliath offered to settle the battle by a single combat, David stepped forward. But David was not just any boy. He would become King David. After Jesus, his is the most complete biography in the Bible. I think that David had a plan because, as he mentions to Saul, I can handle Goliath just as I have handled the bears and the wolves that attacked my flock. My flock now is the Israelite army. My weapon is the slingshot. There is the wolf and the bear. Ancient discoveries will use modern technology and clues from the Bible itself to discover David's technique. Well, David needed a hand sling. The kind of slings that are used in the Near East throughout the late Bronze Age are made pretty much like this. It's braided out of hemp. This is the sort of uh, projectile that was used in Judea, in Israel. Uh, you're looking for a very specific size and shape, a nice smooth oval shape. This improves the aerodynamic nature of the projectile, maximizing accuracy. You need a certain amount of weight to get the projectile to stay in the pouch of the sling happily. If it's too light, it will just fall out as you swing the sling back. If it's too heavy, it won't go as fast when you shoot it. So between those parameters is the ideal uh, sling stone. He chose five smooth stones from the stream and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. Now we have a sling and a stone like the one David himself would have held, we can test this weapon's capabilities. Luis Pons Livermore is the slinging champion of the Balearic Islands home for millennia to the world's greatest slingers. The Balearic Islands get this reputation of being the best slingers in the ancient world. They get an inherited expertise in using the sling. Luis has traveled to the Holy Land to test the destructive power of a replica Iron Age woolen sling and stone. He is investigating the exact technique David himself would have used to bring down Goliath. The sling is like an extension of the arm. It has three sections. One ring is here, and then there's the middle part where the stone goes. It ends in a knot here. You put your middle finger in here, and you hold it in a pinch, not a grip. The stone is put in the top part of it. You simply spin it three times, stretch your arm, and open your hand. The snap heard from a sling is a sonic boom. So much power is released that the end of the sling actually breaks the sound barrier. Luis has erected a nine-foot Goliath target whose forehead is represented by a load cell, a device that measures impact. It is only 4.6 square inches in area, 
equivalent to the region of Goliath's forehead that was not protected by armor. The device will tell Luis just how much force would have hit Goliath's skull. So for a missile the size and shape of a sling bullet, how much force needs to be exerted in order to kill? If we're talking about how much force that is necessary to kill somebody by an impact to the brain, anything over 3,000 newtons spread over an area of 30 millimeters squared is enough to kill a human being. A shockwave goes through the brain and causes the brain to strike the inside of the brain case, irreversibly damaging the brain tissue uh, to such an extent that it, it couldn't work again. 3,000 newtons, or 3 kilonewtons, is equivalent to the force necessary to smash a concrete block in half. Luis readies his sling for the test. The target is tiny, equivalent to the only area of Goliath's forehead that was not protected by armor. Three point six two kilonewtons. That's sufficient to eliminate Goliath with a sling and a stone. Goliath is now dead. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. But to have achieved this must have taken extraordinary skill and nerve. Even Luis, the world's foremost champion slinger today, has found it exceptionally difficult to obtain power and accuracy at the same time. To be able to take out an armored man with one sling stone is uh, a lucky or an incredibly skillful shot, even for a very skilled slinger. He must have been endowed with some tremendous skill, ability and capability that came to fore at the time of a crisis. And the fact that he was able to face a crisis successfully is one of the basic requirements for ultimate kingship. Ancient discoveries have revealed that it is possible for a mere boy to sling a stone so accurately that he could kill a distant target. But to do this, David would have been more skilled than the average shepherd boy in the arts of a warrior, or very lucky, or as the Bible suggests, truly blessed.